Have you ever noticed how much bass dominates all the popular music we hear today? All the way from Yay to Tay. It wasn't always like this. Bass has come a long way, and it's with the help of cars that it has. But the car is only a support character. The unlikely real hero of this story began really as a toy to most, before changing the music game forever. It all started in 1970s Kingston, Jamaica, at a time when the folk roots made way for music that was defined by bass, you know, like reggae and dub and dancehall and rock steady. You know, music to move your body. And nothing moved bodies like the subwoofer. Developed in the late 60s, subwoofers are speakers for the extra low frequencies, you know, 20 to 200 hertz, like this. Leave a time code in the comments when you start to hear the bass. At any rate, you're going to feel it first. And that feeling actually came to theatres back in 1974 for the disaster movie Earthquake. Since then, it's never left the cinema experience. Disco, reggae, dub, and early hip hop took subwoofers from earthquakes to full on body shakes. Sound engineers for the Jamaican sound system crew, Stone Love Movement, actually modified their subwoofers to make an even bassier sound. That deeper bass, along with a few Jamaican DJs, made their way over to the US just as a flourishing auto aftermarket was experiencing a golden age of customization. Lowriders of the Chicano barrios of East LA kicked off the car counterculture as early as the 50s, cruising the streets decked out with outrageous hydraulics. The contest for the biggest sound quickly took off in cities from the west coast to the east, showcased by bass-heavy hip-hop and dance music. Yeah, I mean, that bass frequency is <laughs> is almost everything. It's the rhythmic bed of, of the music, right? And without that rhythmic bed, you don't have this dance music. But even when the bass drum sounds filling the clubs and streets were a deep, sharp thud in the right direction, DJs longed for something more, something that would last. And waiting in 1980, our hero readies for its debut. Introducing the 8 O. Eight. 808. 808. 808. The Roland TR-808 rhythm composer is a drum synth, originally designed more for demo songs than commercial releases. The brainchild of music engineer extraordinaires Don Lewis and Ikutaro Kakahashi, it was a total flop commercially. When the 808 came out, nobody loved the 808. And they stopped production just three years later. But before it was gone, lost to history, a man named Joe with an 808 of his own, made an ad in the Village Voice. Man with drum machine, $20 a session. Party people. Is that true? Yeah. Planet Rock dropped in 1982, earning gold status and capturing the true potential of the 808 for DJs and producers for decades to come. Short one drummer Marvin Gaye used it for sexual healing. But why is the 808 drum treated like this holy grail? The bass drum sound had an adjustable decay that producers could stretch and make the bass frequency really stand out, rattling the subwoofers before fading. It might seem simple enough by today's standards, but in the 80s, it was like electro sorcery. Planet Rock's use of the 808 made a mark everywhere, from LA's hip hop scene to Detroit's techno. The 808 only intensified the battle for the biggest bass, and in 1983, the International Auto Sound Challenge Association was formed, giving people an opportunity to actually compete for the best sound system. They hollowed out their trunk to make room for the biggest stereo system possible, even if it meant the car was undrivable. You don't need an explainer to tell you how important cars are for the American culture, but when you stuff a 1964 Chevy Impala with a super heavy sound system, it becomes a powerful tool for individuality and personality. Pimp my ride, anyone? So much of hip hop culture in, in every element of hip hop is about being seen. That car going by playing the bass, right? I got the biggest speakers in the trunk and I got the low end louder than anybody else's low end. But even without our hero, the 808, the car continues to influence how music is heard. In the HBO documentary, The Defiant Ones, 
Dr. Dre himself said, when I do a mix, the first thing I do is go down and see how it sounds in the car. Decades later, the 808 is still wildly popular. No, really, Missy Elliott, Destiny's Child, and of course, Ye's 2008 triple platinum trailblazer, 808s and Heartbreak, which use the machine extensively in the record. And out of Atlanta came a style encapsulated by its 808 sub bass, made for testing systems and blasting from car windows. You know me, take the good with the bad. Can't complain, the Porsche came with the rain. 808 trap is like fight starting music. You know, like before the lyrics even start. Ooh. Right as hip hop is crowned most popular genre, trap reaches its pinnacle and just keeps rising, mixed and enjoyed with cars in mind. And even though the 808 bass drum sound has evolved over the years, it's still very much all about the bass. Riding this one actually got me thinking a lot about how all those cars rolling down the street, blasting the bass so hard that it vibrates my floorboards. I'm not about to call it a blessing for 2 a.m., but I get it, right? The pride, the passion, that legendary body-shaking sub bass found a home in the back of a car, and together they've been unstoppable.